Howdy, and welcome to some really basic Finnish mainstream media news. I try to read this quickly, and then I want to show you still another article. And you probably understand by yourself what's the connection between those two. Foreign countries. A disaster smolders in the surface waters of the Atlantic. It can get worse for weeks. It won't leave there for several hundreds or thousand years. So this is translated by Google. So you can blame me for my bad pronunciation, but not for the translation. According to the expert, the warming of the oceans is caused by human-caused global warming. Warming oceans may mean an even milder winter. Climate change also causes desertification and the destruction of biodiversity. Eastern wilderness? <laughs> Wow, what a translation of a name. Anyway, the surface temperature of the North Atlantic Ocean has risen to a record high. Temperature deviations were many times higher than in previous years. Alexi Nummelin, research professor of oceanography at the Finnish Meteorological Institute, says that the current sea surface temperature is roughly the same level as it has been in previous years, only in the next month. We are about a month ahead of schedule regarding this heat phase. There is still a month left to go to brand new readings. Heiki Tuomen Virta, Group Manager of the Weather and Climate Change Impact Research Unit. Let's read that again. Weather and Climate Change Impact Research Unit says that the number of ocean heat waves doubled in the last 30 years. According to him, the sea plays a big role in global warming. Normally, cool water rises to the surface of the water, which binds heat. With the El Niño phenomenon, the surface water is warm, so instead of binding, the water radiates heat into the atmosphere. Yeah, one could probably even think that the sun is heating the water. But anyway, just put water in a bucket and put it in the sunshine and check it out a few hours later. Is it warmer than it has been before? Alexei Numenin says that the part of the heat mixes with the deeper water layers of the sea when the surface layer of water later sinks deeper. This increases the temperature of the entire sea and also causes the sea level to rise. Yeah, it's obviously expanding. This is what they are trying to tell you. When the heat gets into deep water layers, it doesn't leave there for hundreds or thousands of years. It's really, it's a really long commitment to sea level rise, says Numenin. Now we have this chart here, which goes as far back as to 1980. Milder winters. El Nino significantly affects weather conditions. Numerin says that the warming of the oceans may lead to even milder winters in Finland. May or may not. This is the expert. The warming of the North Atlantic provides a forecast for long-term weather conditions. If the water is very warm, one could think that there is also enough warm air masses in autumn and winter. According to Unummelin, this does not mean that there will be a terrible heat in October. By atmospheric warming, I mean that the temperatures are higher than average. This can mean, for example, that the snow will not come as early as in previous years. Finland's average, tem average temperature has risen by about 2 degrees since the end of the 19th century. Heike Tuomen Mirta says that winters in Finland are warmer on average than summers. Southern Finland is the most sensitive region in terms of snow cover, so this can be seen there even through the variation from year to year is large. Yeah, I have noticed some differences, yes. Despite, I live now in Eastern Finland and not in Southern Finland, but I lived some years in both of those places, so I have 
a small glimpse. According to Tuomenvirta, the surface layers of the seas warm faster than the deep parts, and this leads to stronger stratification. Yeah, why is it so? Because probably the sun is shining. But anyway, weakening of Earth's magnetic field, leaving in more radiation and stuff like that. But this can lead to a decrease in the primary production of phytoplankton and fish catches in marine ecosystems. Of course, this applies more to tropical and subtropical areas. In the north, the ice area is shrinking and an ice-free sea is released from there. Fish catches can also grow there. Yeah, I won't show now you the snow accumulation on the northern hemisphere. There is a very interesting chart which really contradicts with what he says. But anyway, Alexei Numeni says that he and his curious says that he is curious to see how El Nino affects the hurricane season that will soon begin. The phenomena typically weakens their emergence. He also talks about the effects of the phenomena of living on living organisms. In the Caribbean Sea, for example, the condition of coral reefs is monitored. And when we talk about the heat waves in the sea, it could be very critical. In the north, for example, salmon fish can be sensitive to temperature fluctuations. Extreme temperatures may also be accentuated in shallow waters where for example, juvenile fish live. Uh, 2023 and again one, 1980. What's that? Meren pinnan lämpötila poikemme kuukauden ensimmäisenä päivänä joulukuun viimeinen päivä vuosi 1980 ja blablabla poikemme on laskettu vertamalle kyseisinä ajankohtana mitattuna 1991-2020. 30 years. Doesn't matter in which, which language you read stuff. It's 30 years. 98, it's actually 40 years. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> but anyway, I just got all of 10 years just by making a counting mistake. But anyway, Sea level rise can have devastating effects. Experts from the Finnish Meteorological Institute say that the increase in the sea surface temperature is caused by climate change. Mm, yeah, it's water in a liquid state and not in vaporized form. So, but on top of that comes an annual fluctuations and many other oscillations and fluctuations. Local changes in weather conditions cause extreme temperatures and new heat records. According to the European Commission estimate, so the sea level in Europe will rise by around 60 to 80 centimeters by the end of the century. The potential effects of sea level rise on, for example, infrastructure and nature can be devastating. A third of the EU's population lives within 50 kilometers of the coast. Yeah, and you have no idea how many nuclear power facilities are within the same range. Olkiluoto, for example, in Finland. Extreme phenomena caused by climate change, such as increasing drought, cause, for example, wildfires in the destruction of bio biodiversity. Elsewhere, rains are increasing as a result of climate change, which increases the risk of flooding in waterways. Yeah. So now to the other article. Let's go to this graph quickly. 1980. 43 years ago. This is what they are referring to and talking about one or two centuries Celsius degree in increase in temperature. Now let's go to the other article, which is a very important part of this whole video. Face.org Greenland melted some 460,000 years ago shows high risk of causing sea level rise today. During the Cold War, a secret US Army mission at Camp Century in northwestern Greenland drilled down through 4,560 feet of ice on the frozen island and then kept drilling to pull out 12 
a 12 foot long tube of soil and rock from below the ice. Then this icy sediment was lost in a freezer for decades. It was accidentally rediscovered in 2017 and was shown to hold not just sediment but also leaves and moss remnants of an ice-free landscape, perhaps a boreal forest. But how long ago were those plants growing? Where today stands an ice sheet two miles thick and three times the size of Texas? An international team of scientists was amazed to discover that Greenland was a green land only 460,000 years ago. With a narrow margin of about 38,000 years. Their new study has been published in the journal Science. Bulletproof evidence. Until recently, geologists believed that Greenland was a fortress of ice mostly unmelted for millions of years. But two years ago, two years ago, using the rediscovered Camp Century ice core, this team of scientists showed that it likely melted less than one million years ago. Other scientists working on central Greenland gathered data showing the ice there melted at least once in the last 1.1 million years ago. But until this study, no one knew exactly when the ice was gone. Now, using advanced luminescence technology and rare isotope analysis, the team has created a starker picture. Large portions of Greenland's ice sheet melted much more recently than a million years ago. Yes, one may wonder why Greenland is called Greenland and not Iceland. But anyway, the new study presents direct evidence that sediment just beneath the ice sheet was deposited by flowing water in an ice-free environment during a moderate warming period called Marine Isotope Stage 11. From 424,000 to 374,000 years ago. This melting caused at least 5 feet of sea level rise around the globe. If we assume that Earth has had always the same size. I think Earth is growing. Maybe sometimes very fast or much faster, but usually it's a gradual expansion, which could <laughs> experience fluctuations, jumps in growth. Like we are seven central beings. We have been once six centuries and five centuries. And, and after the next transmutation or evolution or however you want to call it, which is maybe going to happen in a few years. 27? 2027 maybe? It seems to be a very important year, year 2027. 20, but anyway, after that we might be nine, nine centric beams. Yes, where have I been? The melting cost at least five feet of sea level rise around the globe. Yeah. If Earth has been the same size since the beginning. But anyway, it's really the first bulletproof evidence that much of the Greenland ice sheet vanished when it got warm, says University of Vermont scientist Paul Biermann, who co-led the new study with the lead author Drew Christ a postdoctoral chair scientist who worked in Bierman's lab. Professor Tammy Ridmore from Utah State University and 18 other scientists from around the world. 21 people. Really? Understanding Greenland's past is critical for predicting how its giant ice sheet will respond to climate warming in the future and how quickly it will melt. Maybe also the question about how it could have been ice-free back in the days, several hundred thousand years ago when no one had a SUV, no one was producing any metal in large scales, no one was mining with huge equipment burning fossil fuels, producing plastic bags and cow farts and all these kind of things. Uh, 
you know? How? How we are all of a sudden able to do that? Supposedly. It happened in the past, so it will happen in the future. Obviously it happened in the past. Probably more times than they are telling you in this story here. There might be many, many, many volcanoes in Greenland, since I think glaciers are lava flows made of water. But we won't touch this theme now too much. But it's critical to understand Greenland's past, since it has been ice free. But anyway, since about 23 feet of sea level rise is tied up in Greenland's ice. Mm. Yeah, if you assume that all the ice there is created by precipitation, rain or snow, and maybe. But if you assume that the water gets pushed from the ground upwards and it forms a glacier because it's just so cold. Yeah, the water might get created within Earth itself. Out of thin air very deep below our feet. Because it's ex expanding, growing. And water is a part of it. It's coming out of the ground wherever you look. The new study provides strong and precise evidence that Greenland is more sensitive to climate change than previously understood and at grave risk of irreversible melting off. It has been melting in the past and froze over again, so it might happen in the future too. Just saying it again. Greenland's past preserved in 12 feet of frozen soil. Suggests a warm, wet and largely ice-free future for our planet, says Biermann, a geoscientist in Juvenmes Rubenstein School of the environment and natural resources and a fellow in the ground institute for environment unless we can dramatically lower the concentration for of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere plants basically need three things in order to survive sunlight water and co2 the at the moment, I think it's something like 180 parts per million CO2 in our atmosphere. If it lowers to something like 150 parts per million in our atmosphere, it will be too less in order to sustain plants' growth and they will die. As the plants die, so probably many other things will go away too. Back in the days when we had dinosaurs, they were very big, and there were very, rather many of them. They had to eat a lot. Some of them were eating other dinosaurs, but many were eating plants. A big animal needs a lot of food, so we need to assume that there was a lot of food. Otherwise, they couldn't have survived for billions or millions of years or however long they were roaming Earth's surface. So there was plenty of food, plenty of plants, and there was plenty of CO2 in the atmosphere in order to keep the equilibrium between nature or nature's players, let's say the plants and the animals who eat the plants and the animals who eat the animals. Because also those animals who need who eat other animals, which humans are a part of, most often the animals which are eaten are or were eating plants. If there's no plants, there's no food, there's no nothing. Does this continue? Yeah, it continues. Check out. Into the light. The team's new study in science combined with their earlier work is causing a major and worrisome rethinking of the history of Greenland's ice sheet. We had always assumed that the Greenland ice sheet formed about two 
and a half million years ago. Yeah, they probably don't know about sun cycles, 1,500, 3,000, 6,000, 12,000. And many other things they probably haven't heard of, or they're just totally ignorant towards those. So they need to assume. And it's just been there this whole time, and that's very that it's very stable, says Tammy Rindor, a scientist at Utah State University and co-author on the new study. Maybe the edges melted, or with more snowfall it got a bit fatter. But it doesn't go away and it doesn't dramatically melt back. But this paper shows that it did. At Rittner's lab, sediment from the Camp Century core was examined for what it's called a luminescent signal. As bits of rock and sand are transported by wind or water, they can be exposed to sunlight, which basically zeroes out any previous luminescent signal and then reburied under rock or ice. In the darkness over time, minerals of quartz and feldspar in the sediment accumulate freed electrons in their crystals. Probably they do similar things if there is a rather high current of electricity going through. Maybe it's speeding things up quite a bit. Like telerecurrence and geomagnetically induced currents and such things like that. In a specialized dark room, Rittenor's team took pieces of the ice core sediment and exposed them to blue, green or infrared, releasing the trapped electrons with some advanced tools and measures and many repeated tests. The number, released, the number of released electrons forms a kind of clock revealing with precision the last time these sediments were exposed to the sun. And the only way to do that at Camp Century is to remove a mile of ice, says Rita Moore. Plus, to have plants, you have to have light. These powerful new data were combined with insight from Biermann's UVM lab. Their scientists study quartz from the Camp Century core. Inside this quartz, rare forms called isotopes of the elements beryllium and aluminium build up when the ground is exposed to the sky and can be hit by cosmic rays. Yes, radiation. Like I made in my microwave, it's microwave radiation. Looking at ratios of beryllium and other isotopes gave the scientists a window onto how long the rocks on the surface were exposed versus buried under a layer of ice. Yeah, how many times they were exposed to some X flare or something? This could make a big difference. But anyway, this data helped the scientists show that the Camp Century sediment was exposed to the sky less than 14,000 years before it was deposited under the ice, narrowing down the time window when that portion of Greenland must have been ice-free. Under ice. Camp Century was a military base hidden in tunnels under the Greenland ice sheet in the 1960s. Maybe there's still something like that going on there, I don't know. One strategic purpose of the camp was a top-secret operation called Project Iceworm. To hide hundreds of nuclear missiles under the ice sheet near the Soviet Union. As covered, the army claimed the camp was an Arctic science station. The missile mission was a burst. But the science team did complete first of its kind research, including drilling a nearly mile deep ice core. The century century, the camp century scientists were focused on the ice itself. Part of effort of an effort to understand Earth's past ice ages and warm periods, the interglacials. Ah, they are talking about now about those cycles. They took little interest in the twelve feet of sediment gathered from beneath the ice core. <coughs> Then a bizarre story, the ice core was moved in the 97s from a military freezer to the University of Buffalo. And then to another freezer in Denmark in the 1990s. Yeah, Greenland belongs to Denmark. There it was lost for decades. Until it was found again when the cores were, when the cores were being moved to a new freezer. More about how the core was lost rediscovered in some cookie jars. 
and then studied by an international team gathered at the University of Vermont's Gund Institute for Environment can be read here. Secrets under the ice. Sea level. Camp Century is 138 miles inland from the coast and only 800 miles from the North Pole. Yeah, maybe I got to look that up on Google Earth or something. The new science study shows that the region entirely melted. Yeah, the North Pole. Like, obviously. And was covered with vegetation during marine isotope stage 11, a long interglacial with temperature, temperature similar to or slightly warmer than today. With this information, the team's models show that during that period the ice sheet melted enough to cause at least 5 feet and perhaps as much as 20 feet of sea level rise. Yeah, do you know about the Johnny Beckhoff effect, the tennis racket effect? Earth's axe wobbles, so we might have to expect that it will turn over every now and then. So maybe Greenland has been once at the equator. The North Pole has been once at the equator. The research lines up with findings from two other ice cores collected in the 1990s from the center of Greenland. Sediment from these cores also suggests that the giant ice sheet melted in the recent geologic past. The combination of these earlier cores with the new insight from Camp Century revealed the fragile ni nature of this entire Greenland ice sheet in the past at 280 parts per million of atmospheric CO2 or less, and today 422. Really? In the past, at 208 parts per million of atmospheric CO2 or less, and today 422 parts per million and rising. No, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I just don't. Maybe I'm going to make a video about this, but let's see. I disagree with these numbers. If we melt just portions of the Greenland ice sheet, the sea level rises dramatically, says Utah's Temi Ritten Moore. Forward modeling the rates of melt and the, res and the response to high carbon dioxide. We are looking at meters of sea level rise, probably tens of meters. And then look at the elevation, elevation of New York City, Boston, Miami, Amsterdam. Look at India, Africa. Most global population enters. Centers are near sea level. 400,000 years ago, there were no cities on the coast, says UVMS Paul Biermann, and now there are cities on the coast. Yeah, nuclear power facilities. Yeah, there could be quite a bit talk still being made about, made about that whole topic, but I think I leave it here. Uh, yeah. But I got to check out this CO2 because I have seen other numbers which don't really match up with these numbers here. So let's see if I'm going to make a second video about this. Maybe I'm going to leave it here. I don't know. Make your own research. Make your own thoughts about the things. I just try to show you. I read now two articles very sketchily. They belong together. Greenland was ice free some time ago. But anyway, thanks.